How's it going everyone? Jesse Morgan here, aka Malice Grinister, aka Degor Blutenthrope. Uh, today is the resurgence of Jesse Talks Metal. This is episode number three. This is the Slam and Grind content and imagery episode. Now, I was going to do uh, kind of a talk about all metal in general and uh, about their content and imagery, but honestly, that would take way too freaking long because for each genre of metal, there's probably about at least 10 minutes of stuff to talk about per, you know, genre. Uh, so anyways, moving right along, uh, when it comes to the lyrics for Slam and Grind stuff, uh, I've noticed about six different things, maybe five, that have uh, popped up a lot. And that's gore. The top one is gore. And uh, you're going to see a lot of extreme kind of fantasy horror film themes in it. You're going to see a lot of blood and mutilation and serial killer-esque type of imagery and lyrics and it's I think it's mostly just done out of sheer love for kind of the extreme uh you know and in real life we as humans probably unless you're like someone who's on the front lines of war or you're in a really really bad city and you're a cop you're probably not going to see too much you know gore you know, or killing and stuff like that. So, as music artists, we like to express ourselves by fantasizing and writing about stuff that's a little extreme. And what's more extreme than death? And that's a pretty basic, you know, foundation for lyrical content and slam and grind. Uh, next is more towards grind, but you'll see some of it in slam. Uh, it's porno, which is like a, a porno sex themed lyrical content imagery. Uh, once again, it's just because it's extreme, it's tongue in cheek, and it's offensive to people like mainstream people that aren't used to seeing stuff like that. Uh, it's done to get a reaction to go, oh my god, you know, and it's 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 basically just meant to be kind of in your face as most metal is and you know that's one thing you'll be able to find in a lot of grind and some slam uh, another thing you'll find lyrical lyrically and you know imagery through grind and slam is sci-fi uh which is one of my favorite elements actually and it's i think it's a really clever thing to throw in there i mean you know, for gore, you got the horror films as inspiration, probably, to throw uh, into music. But for sci-fi, uh, it's it's really cool. I mean, you can really expand your your fantasy and your lyrical content uh, with that, uh, you know, type of idea. I mean, you got different galaxies and planets and you know different science you can throw in there be, to be technical and there's a lot of intelligent things to be said with that uh you know subject and i think it comes from our natural wonder of what is out there in the universe besides our own planet i mean there's so many songs that are written that are based right here and there's a lot of songs that are based on very personal things but it's neat to see lyrical content stretching to beyond the self beyond our planet to different fantastical kind of universal subjects it's really cool uh some people do it about aliens, some people do it about uh, physics. I know the band Wormed is a really good example of, you know, that kind of thing. Very intelligent lyrics, very thoughtful and 
it's uh, it's kind of a change for that type of music. A lot of people probably would assume that metal is very primal and not very intellectual, but I would say it's a pretty big stereotype. I mean, sure, you get you know albums and bands and stuff like that that are very, I guess, caveman esque and not very thought provoking, but in metal there's a a very wi wide range of things that can be talked about and you know intellectual subjects such as sci-fi and science and technical stuff like that is is definitely within the realms of possibility and like i said that's probably why it's one of my favorite topics in metal uh another thing that i've noticed on the other end however uh like i said very caveman-esque type of imagery and lyrical content is this kind of like fascination with poop and shit <laughs> i don't know if it's like the uh, an upgraded version of fart jokes or whatever, you know, I mean, obviously when you find those types of bands that have that content, they're probably not going to be taken too seriously and they probably expect not to be taken too seriously considering the, the imagery and what they're talking about. I mean, it's, it's extreme, it's offensive and it's kind of in your face but i think it's done to be humorous and as a joke and just kind of a levity to have fun and just write about the most gross kind of shit that you can think of and you know it's it's maybe not the most intellectual but you got to respect it just based on the artistic self-expression side of things you know i for example there's a band called fecal god I mean, right there in the title, Fecal. Uh, there's another band that uses the content like that, which is Nephrectomy. Uh, they have an album. Their first album, I think, was called Geriatric something or other. I, I can never remember the last part of that name. It has something to do with poop. That's all I know. It's, it's like old people pooping on each other while 69ing. That's a, a lovely front cover. <laughs> like, it's funny to me. I get it. Like... There's a, you know, a place for everything, and it seems there's a, a big niche for that. And uh, it's it's in slam, but I think it's more like the grind scene that you'll find that type of content. And let me know if I'm wrong. I mean, I'm doing these Jesse Talks Metal episodes. I mean, I'm in no way a super duper guru on all this stuff. Uh, I'm basically just giving my opinion and. I, I do a little bit of research before I do these episodes. I'm not a complete idiot. I'm just going to come on here and talk about random shit. Um, that would be absolutely pointless, and anyone can do that. I, I like to kind of express my knowledge on metal, and maybe it might be come off as basic to some people to come and view you know, this stuff on my channel, but if it's not your taste, simply move along. I'm sure there's more educated and more deeply thought out more guru -y type of metal talks type of people out there in YouTube so be my guest uh, I'm just giving my own opinion and just kind of talking about the stuff that I like to talk about when it relates to metal and uh, can you blame me <laughs> I mean uh, there's there's definitely a huge huge market for metal out there it's uh, you know, it might not be the most popular. I mean, there are popular forms of metal, but it's still a very underground type of music genre. So, you know, it's very interesting to me, and this is why these Jesse Talks Metal episodes happen. Uh, it's almost hitting a ten mi the 10 minute point in here. Uh, unfortunately, I don't really script these things too well. I mean, I have a basic kind of episode outline and whatever so if you see me you know stumbling here and there it's gonna happen uh, I'll probably eventually do more scripted videos so I kind of stick to the point but just to let you know obviously they're not scripted I do a little bit of outline and I may or may not ramble any one of my friends knows that I like to ramble here and there because sticking to a script is pretty in my opinion boring 
I mean, sure, you get all your points done, out of the way, and concise. But it seems, to me, it seems like it's very robot-esque to do that kind of thing. Whatever, I mean, <laughs> there's, there's a... There's a time and place to script things. I don't like to get too up my own ass about that kind of stuff because these these channels, you know, everyone's gonna have an opinion. Everyone's gonna say what they want. We're not perfect. There's no way in hell I'm gonna have probably a video where I don't say um or uh or you know in it. It's those kind of personal ticks, I guess. Anyways, uh, beyond that, uh, I'm just going to finish this video by saying the imagery is mostly extreme or exaggerated, uh, mostly done to be brutal or offensive or shocking. Uh, a lot of it is probably going to be uh, kind of a DIY, do-it-yourself uh, like quality. There are a few bands out there that are in the slam and grindcore, grind scene that do have very very professional looking art and they probably spent like anywhere to 50 to 500 bucks on their imagery uh but unfortunately in the underground scene and then the the independent slam and grind scene we don't really have a lot of money to spend at least at first towards this kind of stuff until we get a lot of fan base and a lot of people purchasing our merchandise like cds or shirts or People even have flat brim hats out there with their band logos on it. Or well, I've seen recently a lot of people doing these kind of slam shorts. Cool. Uh, I don't think I'll probably ever buy one. What would be cool though, I would like to see merchandise wise, is uh, maybe pants. <laughs> we need more pants. We have like no metal pants. I mean, besides what leather or, or black cargo pants or, or or army jeans or whatever we need we need more pants people come on make more pant merchandise everyone in the middle scenes probably has, probably owns anywhere from 10 to hundreds of band t-shirts like i got right now uh, i'm wearing an ozzy osbourne shirt and maybe like two or three pairs of pants <laughs> maybe if bands started printing more uh you know you know, it can be jeans, cargo pants, what have you, but with like the logo on it, we'd be more inspired to have more of a pant to shirt ratio. Uh, it's, it seems like an idea and it's definitely something I've seen going around where that, that meme on Facebook where it's like band guy has 50 band shirts and one pair of jeans. It's, it's funny, but they're almost not exaggerating. Uh, I guess this, that's probably why I'm seeing the, the, the resurgence or, or or expansion of band shorts so i guess that works but there definitely needs to be like full length pants with band logos and stuff on it because i would totally buy that at a reasonable price of course i'm not going to pay, pay like 50 or 60 dollars for a pair of goddamn pants um and i was going to do a little thing on a tire but now thinking about it, I don't really feel that talking about bands clothing really matters. I mean, you can wear whatever the hell you like and make whatever type of music you want. It doesn't really affect it. I think it's just something for the stage that adds to the, you know, artistic expression. Uh, there has been kind of a, a trend in slam where kind of wigger fashion and tendencies kind of get brought in and introduced and maybe metalized a bit. But that's probably the only thing I'm going to touch on that. There's just so much differentiating clothing choices when it comes to metalheads and metal bands. There's, it's just not worth talking about. Uh, anywho, uh, I don't really have new uh, links and promos for this video, uh, so I'm basically just going to shout out to some of the stuff I've done before, like Craig Newman of CDN Records, 
Uh, just go to cdnrecords.com. He's got tons of slam and death metal and brutal death metal. He's got even got some uh, black metal and uh, stuff like that there. He's got the odd kind of uh, merch, as in like shirts and things like that. Uh, so definitely check him out. He's got r amazing prices too. Uh, and he ships really quickly. Uh, anything that I've ordered from him has arrived within like a week. Mind you, that's because we're both located in Ontario, Canada, so I'm probably more lucky that way that it gets to me that quick. Uh, there's also Brutal Gear uh, at uh, brutal-gear.com. Uh, they have a lot of slam and, you know, really brutal music there. It's awesome. You should order from them for sure as well. Uh, as well, you know, there's, there's still just slamit.bigcartel.com. Uh, Kevin Jenkins may or may not have too much stuff up there at the moment. Uh, I'm not sure. I haven't checked it out in a, in a bit, but uh, he, he's had some stuff in the past, and uh, it's pretty good, so check it out. Uh, as well, if you want any cool band logos or anything done, check out Tony, Tony McBeard of Brutal Disorder Logos. Uh, if you want to, you know, email him about anything like that, uh, email deicide 6 funder at yahoo.com. I'll try to provide a link in the, well, all these links for all these kind of things here in the description as well. Uh, Kading Egapi, he still does band logos and, and art for front cover and stuff like that. Check him out. I'll provide a, you know, email link in the description as well. Oh, also check out Rotten Roll Rex. He's got some pretty amazing stuff. I think he's located in Germany. Uh, as well, laceratedenemy.bigcartel.com has good merch. Uh, mostly CDs, I think. Uh, then there's forcefedmerch.bigcartel.com. They're good. And inheritedsuffering.bigcartel.com. So all those, I'm probably going to put a link in the descriptions. If there's anything you would like to see in uh, future episodes of Jesse Talks Metal, be sure to, you know, hit me up and let me know what you'd want to see me talk about. And uh, as well, I'm going to be doing some updates of what I'm doing musically in a different video that isn't just, uh, sorry, Jesse Talks Metal. Uh, so be sure to check that out. And as well, I've got two, th uh, sorry, two pages on Facebook for you to check out, which I'm going to be providing a link in the description for. Uh, that is Helveta Canada, and that is a black metal promotions page for the moment. Uh, I'm going to be promoting, you know, local Canadian black metal as well as you know, overseas black metal and stuff like that. I don't really promote too much states black metal. I think they've got a lot of their own promotion and stuff like that down there and uh, probably isn't necessary for me to do that but I, I do it anyways sometimes just depending on what kind of comes across my uh, you know YouTube or my research lands me on as well recently myself and uh, my friend Billy uh, William Barry he, uh, he and I have made a slam promo page i know there's a few of them you know going on facebook right now and they have their own thing but uh ours is called super slam bros and the kind of sub title for that is the brutal bearded slam community mostly because billy and i both sport beards and there's kind of a uh, a pro beard thing going around uh, and we've kind of been on it since the beginning. <laughs> so that's our thing. If you want to check that out. Anyway, thanks for watching. This is Jesse Morgan. Stay sick, and I will see you next time.